Hey YouTube! <laughs> Sorry, laughing because this is my third attempt at recording this. I'll be honest, as I always am. Uh, reason being is kind of every time I record something I find a new interest and a little bit of information so I want to share as much as possible. Um, so yeah, I think this this week's bite size is going it, it is about grease tree um, grease tree banding. I'm saying it again. Fruit tree grease banding and um, fruit tree and bush winter washing. Uh, I'm going to start with grease banding. And there's a, there's a little bit more to it. I mean, it's not a long topic by any sense of the imagination. Um, but I'm going to start with banding. And all what, what fruit tree grease banding is, be it whether you're using a, a, a tub of horticultural grease or you're using the, the paper wrap, paper-backed um, prepared grease bands, all it is is a physical barrier to stop some fruit tree larva, um, like, is it March moth, winter moth, and umber moth. I actually quite like the look of an umber moth, but they're uh, detrimental to fruit trees unfortunately. Um, it, they, the females for those, the ones that go and lay the eggs, are flightless, so they actually require being able to climb up the tree trunk. And what you're doing by adding on the grease banding is you're essentially all you're doing is blocking their passage up the um, up the tree to where they need to lay their eggs. So you know it's kind of a dare I say humane way of controlling the insects. Um, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about uh, when to apply, how to apply, and what to apply. There's um, something that's a little different. So when to apply, right now, um, if not, now's a little too late, but with the weather we've been having here in the UK, with the consistent rain and things like that, any opportunity you get, basically, you want to be getting these grease bands done, you can't do them in wet weather. <laughs> Trust me, you can't do them in wet weather, especially not if you're using the painted grease. Um, you'll get mucky bands before you get them on, you'll get the grease won't stick properly to the tree, you, you'll get a whole world of problems. Trust me, wait till a dry day. Or if you know, you're really adamant you're not going to get a dry day, go put a brolly over your tree and leave it for a day or two. Um, you need that section of tree to be dry. So how to grease band? Now this is the weird thing. Well it's not, it's not weird when you think about it, but if you would say this was your fruit tree, okay, this is your stake that you've got helping steady your fruit tree. Now what you've got is you've got a band going across here. Now ideally you want your grease band to be between a foot and a half to two foot from the base of the tree on the main primary trunk. Now problem is if you've got quite a tall um, supporting stake and you've got a band up here that's, I don't know, three, four feet off from the base of the tree, then what you're going to need to do is come down your tree, so you put your grease band on at your two foot point, but then you're also going to have to put one on the supporting stake, otherwise your insects are just going to crawl up here, go across your support band and then up into your tree, defeating the object. Your other option is to just go on the main trunk above where your, um, where your stake is, which is what I do, purely and simply because I have kids, dogs, cats, chickens, things like that. And um, I don't want everything getting covered in grease, so I tend to go above my fruit and my fruit, my, um, supporting stakes. And for the most part, my supporting stakes are quite low. Um, I do need to redo my apple, um, so that's probably going to need re grease branding in January. Some people out there do say that you can take your grease bands off by the end of April. I personally see that as more hassle than it's worth. Now on to the what product to use. Um, I know it's going to sound it's it, it's going to sound really silly, but it is important. You've got 
two primary types of bark out there. You've got a nice smooth one and then you've got a mottled bark, so one with cracks, crevices, things like that. If you've got a nice smooth tree, most apples are a smooth bark. Uh, my peach is a smooth bark. You can just use the paper backed grease bands, they're perfectly fine. You'll get a nice tight fit um, and you, you know, creatures ain't going to, creeper crawlers ain't going to be able to go up underneath the grease band. Now, if you've got a cracked bark, like most older cherries do, you need to be putting the grease tree, I've done it again. The fruit tree grease paint on or horticultural grease it's also known as. Um, I use uh, Vitax fruit tree grease. Uh, you put it on, all you do is you daub it on with a paintbrush, nice thick band about two inches thick if you can. Um, and make sure you, you, you get it in all the cracks and crevices. You don't need to fill the cracks and crevices with it. You know, you're not you're not making a, a smooth section of bark. That's not that's not the point. The point is to get the grease in there so the insects can basically just bypass the grease. So you need to make sure that it's all on there. The next one or the next point I want to cover is winter tree washing, which is something I find very important. Um, and the reason behind, or the reason I find it important is I suffered massively in the second year of my fruit trees with um, woolly aphids, um, primarily on my cherry tree. Um, and uh, uh, prior to, prior to um, my first year winter washing, I'd, I'd never heard of it. I didn't, well, I'd heard of it, but I had no idea what it was for. I thought it was a, a, an antifungal thing, something like that, which it is. It is an antifungal, um, but it is also a natural pesticide. I think on Sunday's video, I actually said, I didn't know whether it was organic or not. It is, in most instances, Vitax don't market it as organic, but they actually don't put anything in that um, would would um, would mean it's inorganic. They all all they use is tree oils, fruit oils, and fish oils. And when it comes to the aphids and, and the and the the eggs and the larvae of, of, of certain insects, the reason we winter wash is the oils that are in it will essentially suffocate the egg, um, making it unable to breed, unable to hatch um, the, the, the larvae inside the egg will suffocate before it hatches. It will also stop young already hatched things from reaching maturity through the same means. It will also stop some fungal infections of the tree. Um, I think for me I had one on my peach tree which for year for, for, for a good two or three years I was confusing for um, what do they call it leaf fire um, or, uh, fire blight that's it I was confusing it for fire blight um, turns out it wasn't it was a fungal infection so strip the tree back um, give it a good wash um, and lo and behold the tree sprang back to life Fingers crossed, touch wood and all that, that it doesn't come back again this year. My trees have had a winter wash. Couple of points on winter washing. Uh, I've got to thank Aaron for this one of the, for two of these, I think actually, for bringing them to my attention. I always thought you couldn't do too much with winter wash. You couldn't over treat. He has uh, come to me and said, you can over treat it's an oil based product and what you can do is you especially if you make it too concentrated so be sure to follow them the instructions your dilution instructions if you over treat you can leave oil on the um, on the buds right the way through to spring when those buds open the oil remains on the leaves your sun comes out and you can end up scorching all the leaves on the plants um, so do follow the manufacturer's dilution ratios. Um, there was one other thing he said to me actually, 
Um, no, it was that. It was the same point, but it was. He says, you know, bear in mind with winter washing that you can scorch your plants, but it's not just winter washing. Any topical um, pesticide, herbicide spray that you put on, make sure you don't overdose your tree with it. So that being said, in order to help reduce the problems of overdosing the tree with it, you also need to pick when you do it. It needs to be a calm day, and it needs to be a dry day, and you need to have a good 24 to 48 hours of dry weather forecast. This stuff does dry quite quickly, but you need it to dry before the rains come, otherwise you're going to defeat the object and then you're going to be thinking, ah, do I need to go put another, another wash on? And you can end up overdosing your plant. Now bear in mind with your winter tree wash, you can do your trees and your fruit bushes. So your gooseberries, your raspberry canes, your blueberries, uh, brain's gone, completely gone. Red currants, black currants, white currants, things like that, they can all be sprayed with a winter tree wash. Wait until, if you can, wait until all the leaves have fallen. Not because it will be detrimental to the leaves, but because the leaves will fall, will, will, will create a physical barrier. You're not going to be able to soak those branches properly. You're not going to get good coverage, and that's what's important. Because in all the little nodules where all your little leaves come out of, there are all the little cracks and crevices behind the... Uh, I'll, try, I'll try and show it up here, because I'm trying to do it with my fingers. And same with the... Um, fruit tree grease banding thing. Um, all your little nodules, your little nooks and crannies out where your leaves have grown, that's where those eggs are going to be, that's where those insects are going to be hiding. So you need, to, that's where you need your, your spray to be, to be penetrating. I'll try and also do sort of a little picture in picture of, uh, of, of the, the little bit of action cam footage I got when I was doing mine because it, it came out quite well apart from the, the camera was covered in water but you can see the point the central point of the the video so we've talked about winter tree washing we've talked about fruit tree grease banding fruit tree grease banding you know what I mean now um, there's, there's one question I want to address that I'm seeing quite often on Facebook groups and that is um, rhubarb a lot of people asking am I too late or is it too early to dig up and move my rhubarb or dig up and split my rhubarb etc etc no now is the time to do it um, get it up a bit of an old wives tale but everybody seems to go by it dig it up leave it out let it get a frost on it I've asked Aaron who is a very knowledgeable lad he doesn't know but it's, it's not something he hasn't heard of. He's, he's heard of it, I think. Might be putting words in his mouth there. Um, but my thinking is, the logical thinking is, that um, when you've split your crown, what the frost will do is it will kind of get a, give it a kick up the arse to get going again once, once you rebury it. So dig it up, leave it out a couple of nights, then bury it. Now is the time to be doing it. On another side note with regards to, to planting things now, onions and garlic, you're not too late. The old way of doing things is plant on the shortest day, harvest on the longest. So the shortest being the 27th of December. So you're not too late. Um, also, if you're, if you're like me, if you're itching a bit to get some seeds in, if you really want to, if he's a little bit early, I'd leave it a month. But you could, if you've got space and light, put some onion seeds in. Do so at your own risk. I have a light box, so that's why I can start mine off now. Um, windowsill light won't cut it. There's not enough hours of light in the day. You do need supplementary light. But you can if you've got the if you've got the means. So it's it's another option and it, it helps quell that itch a little bit of getting something in the uh, in the compost, getting your hands dirty. So until next time, I hope that's covered everything you need. If you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments below. If you like what we're doing here at Conversation Shed, please give us a like and subscribe. It means a hell of a lot. Even more so if you can share the videos, it really means a lot. 
please check out my shout out videos that are going at the moment there's some great uh, great YouTube content creators out there some great really helpful people who take time out of their day to create content that helps you so please help me to help them go over drop them a like drop them a subscribe hey if you feel like it tell them we sent you it would mean the world to us to get um, to get a community going again I've had a lot of YouTubers say to me that the, the community feeling is gone from YouTube um, and it's why a lot of the bigger YouTubers, I think, have struggled recently. So let's not let that happen. Let's combat this insular us versus them mentality. Let's try and get everybody together, right? It's Christmas. Share the love. And on that note, Merry Christmas. I hope you're having a good festive period. And I'll see you someday. I'll see you later.